hello and welcome. <laughs> okay, you want the bone, blimey. You knew it was in my pocket, didn't you? What I did is, because whenever I do a recording, he always wants something. So I went into the kitchen and I got my packet of food. But I also sneakily put one of his little bones into my pocket. And he ate the food. Because if I'd have given him a bone first, he'd have, eaten, he'd have had that and he'd have ignored the food. So he had his food first. It's, it's all gone. And he's been waiting patiently, just staring at me for about 10 minutes. And I don't know if you can hear him. You gonna make some noise for everyone? Do you want it? Do you want it? Do you want it? You don't want it, do you? Okay, don't worry. I'll, I'll just talk. You'll hear him. So welcome to Let Me Boy to Sleep. My name's Jason Newland. Uh, please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. He's begging now. He's on two. He's on his two feet. With his paws up. I can. I can't see his face. Do you want this, Vinny? There you go. Oh, you beautiful little thing. <sighs> so, uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to Tammy. Thank you for your PayPal gift. I will send you a, a personal message, but thank you. So, thank you very much. Oh, I think I need to fart. No, I didn't. But Vinny did it. It was Vinny. Vinny. God damn it. That didn't really work, did it? That wasn't me. I didn't fart. I forget it happened. I had pains in my stomach today. So it's been quite a busy day, really. I did. I. I got up about. Three o'clock in the morning and spent the first I only spent about an hour editing the podcast from the night before and it normally takes a little bit longer so I did quite well so I edited it I didn't manage to upload all of the recordings to the different places during that period but and but I did the editing the processing and then I had my breakfast at I think four o'clock and while that was happening I was uploading so I don't have to do anything as far as the the uploading kind of does itself if that makes sense it takes a while though to do and then I feel by about 5.30 I went back and had a what was it 6, 5.30 or whatever uh, I had a little nap the video was still in bed the whole time and then we got up and I did a bit more stuff online And I took him out for his first walk of the day about, I think it was about 10 to 8 this morning. And he didn't want to go to the to the park. He, he wanted to go a different direction. So I thought, okay, I'll just follow him. No, we did go through the, no, that's it. We went towards the park and then for some reason he wanted to stay on the pavement. And then he led me across the road through an alleyway. Well, a different. He doesn't normally do that. So I just followed him, and then he led me into the fields. So we crossed the road, went into the field. And there's a huge amount of fields all around. Like once you get there, it's only a few minutes away. So I let him off the lead, and he's running around and just sniffing everything. And you know he's. I mean, we went into the field yesterday as well. He did three poos, three separate poos. And he didn't even do one while we were in the field today. And I think he might have done one afterwards, I can't remember. So we're walking around. 
go round the field. It's a lovely day. It's really, really fresh and I've still got my jacket on though. And it's a little bit I think it's a little bit too warm for the jacket. It's getting there. If it gets if it gets warmer, I'm gonna to have to actually literally not wear anything underneath. Because I've got nothing I've got no jacket to wear, so I don't know what to do. Uh it's uh because I had planned at the beginning of the year it wasn't so much a New Year's resolution, but it was a you know, an idea is to maybe lose some fat. Not bothered about weight, but lose some fat so that I can have a summer body. Now, I, I haven't had a summer body since oh, probably 2004, to be honest. But even 2006, I was okay because I was still a lot lighter than I am now. But, you know, anyway, so I kind of decided, uh, I'll, you know, I'll get a little bit, try and get myself a little bit of a, a summer body so I can walk around, maybe even in a t-shirt, which is something that I would never do, you know, not since 2006. Well. It's not totally true. I sometimes walk around in a t-shirt, but generally I don't. Well, I realised yesterday that I'd just forgotten to do it. I'd forgotten to lose weight. And it's now nearly May. It's the 30th of April, 2022. And I've, like, completely forgot to do it. Because... Just been busy, you know, with well, I don't know with what, but just generally dealing with things. But it's my belly, really. That's the only thing. I mean, I probably could do with uh, tightening up my chest. My boobs are probably a little bit not quite as firm as they used to be. Um, my buttocks, I can still tense. The muscles in my buttocks, like individually. That sounds weird, but I can. Even sitting down, I can tense the right one, then the left one, right one, left one, then the middle one. <laughs> no, but I, I just kind of... I can do that with my, my bosoms as well. But it's not, you know, it's not quite as good as they used to be. But it's all right. I might um, maybe get back to doing... I don't make myself laugh. Getting back to doing some um, uh, press ups and sit ups and stuff. The weird thing about it is, I could do a hundred leg raises. You know, when you lay on your back and you just raise your legs up, you have to hold. You put your hands underneath your bum or whatever just to keep your hands down. I could do a hundred of them. So I do have muscles in my stomach. Now sit ups. I pretty much have to, I mean, I don't know. I have to hold my breath when I cut my toenails. It's not because they smell so bad. That's part of the reason, but it's, you know, I can't reach my toes without holding my breath. So, I don't know. Perhaps I need to go to a, a chiropractor or whatever it is to get my toenails clipped. Uh, who knows? So, I... Today... It's Tuesday. And tomorrow's Wednesday. Today I have... Mm, and this is something that I'm still thinking about. So i am still been working on a Zen... Zencast transferring the individual podcasts over to there still keeping the main ones where they are but just transferring the ones that are basically getting no views no no plays because there's there's no music on them and stuff 
so now I've been doing that and I spent a lot of yesterday and today working on the sleepy boring objects now I've got about five more to do or six more to do and then it's completed that podcast apart from the written description and the tags tags that's another thing so I need to do but I can do them another time so all I need to do is just a few more little bits take probably about 20 minutes and then it's done and then I can uh, put the RSS feed and reconnect it or redirect it rather on Apple Podcasts and that will be four shows that I'll have done ASMR Let Me Boy to Sleep and Jason's Bedtime Story Time Stop Smoking Hypnosis and now Sleepy Boring Objects the thing is hmm how can I put this oh I'm tired I really should do these podcasts earlier in the day how do I put okay I don't know if it's really worth the hassle with all this stuff uh, like giving attention to the the older stuff the old podcasts I don't know maybe, maybe I should just say you know what let me boy to sleep that's it it's the only one that I'm going to be uh, focusing on I just don't know I don't know because part of the let me boy to sleep also involves the bedtime story time so I also always include those in that podcast anyway. It also includes the sleepy boring objects. So it's mm, you know what I mean? I feel I also include the let me boil your pain away on there as well. And also the ASMR, let me boil to sleep. So those other four podcasts also get included in the Let Me Boil to Sleep podcast because they're all connected I know the let me bore your pain away is a, a different thing but it's still the same it's the same format and the bedtime story time is just me being silly sleepy boring objects is it's pretty much an identical thing as what I do with these let me bore you to sleep ones except I'm more focused on a particular object or subject. So if I decide to talk about Wellington boots, for example, I will stick to that subject, kind of. Admittedly, I've not listened back to any of the recordings, so I don't know if I do stick to the subject. But I try and make sure I come back to the subject. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know. Kind of what to do. I'm not sure. Um, what do you reckon? Anyone? <laughs> Any ideas? Bedtime story time. Bedtime story time. Da, 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 da. Images. Podcast. Bedtime story time. Three bear. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Okay. Downloads. Downloads. Story time. I wonder. Bedtime story time. I should have moved these. PGN file. Ten hours. Jason's bedtime story time. Earlier this year. Yeah. Nope. That didn't work. Yeah. Story time. Sorry, I just realised I got distracted. So I'm just I'm not sure. I'm not sure what to do. Any any ideas? 
Uh, I think I'd be better off if I was able to focus and just say, you know what? You know what? Well, not focus in the sense of focus because that's not really something that I tend to do anyway. Probably as much as would be expected from an adult. However, um, oh, I don't know. I don't know. What do you reckon? Jason's bedtime story time. Well, that's weird. It's just disappeared. That's strange. Oh, well. So, I don't know. What do you think? Should I just stick to the let me boy to sleep and do one of them every day and focus on that? But then there's that little niggle of, like, well, uh, you know? Am I helping people? Because, you know, I'm not, I'm not doing this just to entertain myself. Although I do tend to entertain myself <laughs> in a weird way. That's not why I'm doing it. It's not the reason. Oh, by the way, if you want to see a funny picture, Hillary posted a picture of her doggy. And I won't spoil it for you, but it's on Jason Newland's boring group. Mm -hmm. It's a funny picture. So, I, today, so I took him for a walk in the field, I got back about, so just before nine o'clock, so he was out for about an hour, and then, Yeah, I worked on some more stuff. As I said, I've been working on the uh, Sleepy Born Objects podcast. So I've been doing that. And then I had a phone call from a friend. So I spoke to him for, I don't know, like 20 minutes or something. Then I had... Then I, I spoke to my friend's dad for a while as well, not, lo not long after that. And then I... What else did I do? I don't know, it feels like the day went quite quick. Because it's now 20 to 8 in the evening. And I don't, I feel like I've been busy. I mean, to be fair, yeah, because I was uploading recordings all day, so it's quite time consuming doing that. There's not a lot involved in it, it's just like sitting here, uploading, putting title in, uh, and just clicking different buttons and stuff, and waiting for it to upload, and then saving it, and then uploading the next one, and you know, like that. And because that podcast has, let's have a look, so number 25, number 25, this one has, oh they've all been uploaded, 35, there's 138 episodes, so it's 35 altogether. 138 including the different different types so I've still got 10 10 images to upload so 10 times by 4 so it's 40 blimey so it's, it won't be finished today but I'll, I'll get it done tomorrow it's probably another hour probably to do that much maybe maybe a couple of hours uh, to do that Or should I just just wave goodbye to them and focus on this? I don't know. What do you What do you think? Any ideas? You know, I don't know. Do you know? I don't know. Do you know? Do you know? I don't know. Vinny's he's got his um, very impressive little friend out at the moment. <laughs> he's just looking at me like, 
So, <laughs> fair enough. Blimey. It would be the world's biggest one if it was human. Blimey, you're, you're a good boy, you are. He is a good boy. He's got so much, so much love in him to give to, well, basically everyone but me. He's He's got so much. He just loves meeting new people and, you know. What was a bit weird, though, we went into the, f what do we go into the park this yeah. afternoon. Shh. Yeah. Oh, we've got new neighbours slamming the doors downstairs. And every time they do it, Vinnie barks. But I don't know if it's so much about the, the door slamming as opposed to which door is being slammed. Because it's my friend that used to live down there. And now new people have moved in. And I think... I don't know, I can't read his mind, but I'm imagining that he he knows the sound of that door. And he thinks that my friend's going to come up and see him. Because that was his uncle. He loved seeing him. He saw him every day. Got super excited to see him. He used to go into his flat most days as well. Um, but, of course, you know, he can't see him anymore. So, And he can't see his other friend, Logie, because Logie's not around anymore. He's moved. He's not moved on. He's, he's living in a new home now. Vinny hasn't seen him since... Uh, the end of February. Yeah, end of February. So it's a January, November, December. No, end of January, not February, end of January. January, February, March, April. So it's three months. Um, so yeah. And there's, oh, I spoke to... My friend's dad. And there's some personal stuff. I can't, I can't talk about it on here. But my friend Luke, his family are really going through it. What was that? Someone's slamming. His family is like members of his family are ill and really, it's like, oh. I wish that, you know when you feel like, oh, I just wish you could do something, but I can't. There's nothing I can do. I just wish I could. I wish I could. I said to his dad, like, because it's his niece and uh, that he's that's unwell. And I said, I oh, know, I just feel, just wish I could just wave a wand and and uh, just make things, almost make things stop. Just like, okay, that's enough now. This family has has had enough now. That's that's enough. You know, just just give them a break. Because they've really been, they've really gone through it for quite a long time now. Since the end of November, which we've been seen before that, but since the end of November, it's just, come on. Anyway, I don't like to be all serious on here, so I just wish them all well. I hope that they'll be okay. I suppose I'm thinking about him because the friend I spoke to who phoned me, is actually also a really good friend of his as well, uh, of Luke. So we were talking about him, and and then another one of his friends came around yesterday, and we were talking about him. And then I'm talking, then I'm on the phone to Luke's dad, and we were talking about him. So I'm kind of, I guess, and I saw someone in the park, and we were talking about him, someone else that used to know him. Uh, and then uh, coming back, someone else that used to know him, who I. Who I didn't know, I don't know very well, but he used to work at the petrol station. Um, I didn't recognise him to start with, and he was saying, "Oh, condolences for your friend," and I'm like, "Oh, thank you." It's only when I got home, and I'm like, "Oh, yeah," I realised who he was. The thing is, because when when they stand behind the counter of the petrol station, they're much taller, the people, because it's higher up. I didn't realise this really until today. I did just it clicked because one of the blokes I see regularly, I saw him in the park and we were talking for about an hour in the park. And I realised he's only a little bit taller than me. But in there he looks about 6'4". 
And this bloke that I saw outside, who used to work there, he 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 looked really tall. I mean, he's not he's not sure. He probably is about six, six one, six foot six one or something. But he looked just so much taller. It's like that's why I I don't necessarily categorize people by height, but it comes into it, doesn't it? If you if you think someone's really really tall and you see them from a distance or you see them in a different environment it it's a little bit of oh it's like no is that the same person maybe <laughs> i don't know is is any of what i'm saying true i think it is so yeah i started thinking about luke and I know I call him my friend downstairs. I never named him when he lived here. I got more than one friend downstairs, but but he was my friend, and um, yeah, he still is my friend. But anyway, so I guess that's why I'm thinking thinking of him. So that kind of took up a lot of my day today, and I was talking to. The other bloke who was in the park and it's weird because I walk into the park with Vinny and this is about 20 to 3 in the afternoon might maybe even late earlier than that about 20 to 3 so I'd purposely go there so I can avoid the school the people picking up kids and stuff so I just keep out of the way of that so I was gonna get him take him for a quick walk and just get back home so I'm not in the way and as I walk around the corner I hear dogs barking so I think okay so I keep him on a short the lead short just in case you never know what's around the corner do you literally in life so I go around the corner and there are five adults and four dogs all huddled around chatting and the dogs are barking two of the dogs are barking and one started barking at Vinny. Vinny started barking back like he was. He just they were just talking to each other, I guess. All five of the adults ignored me. Or well, ignored him. Completely ignored him. Like we weren't even like we were invisible. And Vinny went up, because I've got seven meters on my lead. <laughs> Exaggeration. Um, but yeah, I'm showing off. So I've got, I've got seven meters, so he, he can go quite ahead of me. I didn't let him have the whole length. And he he didn't get close, right close to them, but close enough for them to like look around and say, oh, whoa, oh, whoa, oh, whoa. <laughs> Why would they go, oh, whoa? But you know what I mean, like to acknowledge. And they still didn't. Completely blanked us. Five adults and four dogs. Normally in that scenario, people let all the dogs off and they run around. Not this lot. And they were standing there chatting. And we walked all around the field. Occasionally they'd look over. Mind you, you can't really... The thing is, you can't say well, someone was staring at me. Because the only way you know if someone's staring at you is if you're staring at them. He keeps looking at me. Yeah, how do you know that? Because I keep looking at him. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so. The. And I'm walking back. And I was like. Oh, I've got to walk past them now. And they were still standing there. So it's good. I'm not a quick walker. Walker. I'm not. I don't walk very quickly. So probably about 15 minutes. We were walking around the park, that part of the park, maybe 10, 12 minutes. And we walk back. And we're heading towards the, to walk around them. And I thought, they're still like, I don't know what that is. If I've, they don't, is it me? Is it Vinny? Is it, is it because he's such a scary looking dog? It's the size of a cat. <laughs> he's the size of a, the size of a quite a large cat, house cat, you know? In fact, I've seen house cats bigger than him. Anyway, he's uh, he's like a squirrel. He's basically like a a he's a he's a dog. 
He's a beautiful dog. Anyway, I so I'm walking back and I see my friend who works at the petrol station coming in with his dog. But he was holding. I couldn't see who it was. I could see it was a big black dog. But from the distance, I couldn't see. My eyesight doesn't reach that far. And then as he starts to walk closer, his face becomes more focused a little bit, enough for me to feel like, oh, it's him. So I shout, please be my friend. I'm lonely. And he came over and we hugged and... Yeah, we chatted for about an hour, just about boxing mainly, and then led to other stuff. You know how conversations can. And uh, yeah, it was quite nice. His dog, oh, she's lovely. It's a big old dog, and it howls like a wolf. I'm talking a wolf. Like, if you, you watch any movie with the sounds of wolves and that's what this dog sounds like oh, 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 like that I realised that probably sounded like an owl but you know I'm not a ventriloquist you know I can't do all sounds but he is, she is she's really lovely big now Vinny a few months ago Vinny saw we, I saw him in the park again and Vinny barked the whole time at this big dog. In the end, I just had to say, I'll see you later. Because it was, it was annoying me so much. Because I couldn't hear what the bloke was saying. Like, over him yak, yapping. Raff, 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 for about 10 minutes. So I just came home. But today, he, he had a little bit of a bark. And then he was, I think, I think... He was just grateful that he saw a dog in a park that wanted to say hello or that he was allowed to say hello to because there was four dogs literally uh, probably 50 yards away that weren't probably less than 50. You know what? As an aside, <laughs> I'll come back to the story in a minute. Because I got seven meters on my lead, I now seem to think I know what meters are. <laughs> and I try and work it out. I think, well, that's 100 meters away. But then I think, no, because I've only got seven meters to play with. And a hundred that's 10, 10 times plus whatever else. And no, it's more than that. So I can't. I can't judge distances like that. Uh, so yeah, I did have a really good business idea though, which would also make the roads much much safer. But I won't mention it because I don't know. I'd mention it if I thought there was someone out there that could make it happen, and I could perhaps make some money out of it. That'd be nice. But to be fair, make it happen. I don't care even if I don't make any money. If it makes the road safer, it's worth it. But it'd be nice to make a little bit of money. It'd be nice to have an income. Income. Apparently, the government are going to try and take away benefits from anyone. So, people that have got mental health issues, such as bipolar, like myself. Uh, so... It might be, things might be changing soon. Things are always changing anyway, aren't they? So it might come to a point where I'm just sitting here. Just like, oh, what am I going to eat? I have to walk up to the soup kitchen. And yeah, that's going to be interesting times. I lose weight though. I'll definitely lose weight. If I have to walk all the way into town and back three times a day to get food. Because you can get food. It's, there's no, no one has to go hungry in this area anyway. If you're willing to travel to get there. I know not everyone can physically do that. I know that. I realise that. But um, I 
think I would struggle to walk that distance because of my back. But, I, you know, that, if it's a case of doing it or not eating, I would do it, I guess. And there's places you can eat during the day as well. I think a couple of churches have food. And you can get food thingies, food parcels from the food bank. As well as every night there's a soup kitchen. And I think they even have a... Oh, there's a... I don't know if it's once a month or every two weeks. There's a Sikh charity that cooks food for people and brings food. Um, the reason I know about this is because, you know, knowing me being Mr. Perfect, I actually used to volunteer at the soup kitchen for a little while. Mr. Is there anything you've not done to help humanity? Can't think of anything. <laughs> no, I didn't do it for long. They didn't... Um, I did it in, in my previous town. And you used to make sandwiches at home, soup, and then coffees and tea. But soup, soup kitchens, I mean, at first of all, it's not a kitchen. This didn't even have tables in this town where I lived before. It was putting stuff on a wall outside a church, or a church wall, basically. And people would just come and just, I uh, don't know how to really explain it it would be like a frenzy and not everybody would get fed sometimes so that that, that kind of I found that a little bit frustrating because I just wanted to make sure everyone was everyone was treated the same but those that uh, how weird is this how weird is this I just clicked on the news website, the, the local news website. What's the headline? Soup kitchen looking for a new home with square underground revamp. Or un no, with square, so with the square undergoing revamp. So the place where it's currently at, it's about to undergo a revamp. So they're looking for somewhere else to home it. Somewhere else to lay the tables out and do the soup, soup run. What are the chances of that happening? Of seeing that? That's weird. The genuine, and I've been on this website already today because I go on every day because I'm waiting to see about the coroner's report from a friend. So that was not a headline earlier. This is a new headline. Blimey. Wow. It's not about the... It's, I'm not like, wow, about the, the soup run needing a new home. It's just like, that I'm talking about it. And then... Yeah, that was strange. Wow. Blimey. Anyway, okay. Let's... Uh, that's very just that is isn't that do you think that's a bit weird the uh, maybe maybe not then maybe not I'm trying to look at this thing this stupid thing is trying to get me to sign up all I want to do is just read what it says but no must sign up to read it. Why? Go away. Sometimes it just lets me read it, and other times, like it does that. So yeah, in the Ipswich one, I mean, in 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 the the, the one here, where I live now, it's well, I say where it was because they're moving it. Uh, the it's really well organised. I mean, the one before is probably well organized now as well because it's a lot it's a long time ago that was 2000 and oh i don't know 2004 i think and uh, so 
yeah, it's, and it, it, I think most of the soup kitchens or the soup runs, I, I've never heard it called a soup run before, uh, I think are run by, organised by churches. As far as I know, again, I might be wrong, but the ones that I've, I know, I've seen, have been run by churches. What it's like in other parts of the country, I don't know. I reckon... I imagine that there's lots of different ones run by lots of different organisations, I'm guessing. Why am I talking about that anyway? I don't know. There must be a reason. Why... Do you ever wonder, like... Do you think I'd be better off if I actually had a, a subject matter? Like, this is what I'm going to discuss. Do you realise, oh man, do you re I've actually, you might wonder, what would the recording be like? What would one of my podcasts be like if I actually edit out, edited out the, what some would class as nonsense? Well, I did this recently. Uh, in a well it's actually a hypnosis recording it was one of the sleep hypnosis daily ones and me talking at the beginning and all that stuff it reduced it by about 15 minutes if I got rid of the nonsense from a let me boy to sleep episode that probably the only the only sensible part would be the actually introduction I guess you know it'd be like 30 seconds long and that'd be it so I don't know I'm just so full of questions oh he's loving his little bone you know what darling So, I need to eat something. Last night, did I speak to my brother before or after I did the recording? I think I spoke to him afterwards. And I was on the phone for about, I don't know how long. Let me have a look. How long was I on the phone for? So I need, basically what it is, I spoke to him the other day. No, I, I texted him. I phoned him twice, two different times, uh, as opposed to like one after another, you know, two different days. And he sent me a message saying, uh, what did he say? Let's have a look. Uh, go away. <laughs> Who is this? Uh, so it been a bit of sad times with a few things. So I like, okay, I'll try and call you soon to catch up. Hope you're okay. So I'm like, that's a bit vague in a sense of what, sad times. Like, okay. So I started to, I started to be a bit concerned, if I'm honest with you. A little bit concerned. And I thought, I just thought about it and I thought, you know what? I will. I give him a call, and I phoned him. I phoned him up last night because you know I'm concerned about him. And I tried to explain this to him. I said, regardless of what's going on in your life, uh, regarding other people, I know that that's a huge thing that affects us when other people are going through it and that. But ultimately, I just want to make sure that you're okay. And. But then it's like, well, yeah, but we are just, I don't know. There was, there was some logic until it came out of my mouth. So I phoned him up last night and I said, look, um, I had to call you because I was just worried. I was concerned after the message you sent. And I didn't know what to think about it. And I just needed to speak to you and to 
just find out if you're okay. And he said, are you trying to talk like that famous actor? I said, what, what do you mean? I don't know, talk like who? He said, uh, Christopher, whatever his name is. Christopher, what? Uh, I don't get what you're talking about, my brother. He says, it's not really working, is it? I said, no, not really. So, Christopher... Lamb, Christopher Plummer, no, Christopher Biggins, <laughs> Christopher Biggins, <laughs> oh dear, that's funny in the UK, Christopher Biggins, um, Chris, it's something, and I said, no, I'm not trying to talk like him, I just want to find out if you're, if you're okay, he said, uh, any, we, anyway, we had a conversation, uh, and he's okay, kind of, but, you know, I can't go into his details, but it's, yeah, he's just going through a lot of stuff, you know, just, just life, really, life stuff. And I was, even though, you know, he's struggling, I was just pleased that he's not, I just, I don't know, I just thought it was, I kind of thought the worst in a way. I didn't tell him what I was thinking, but he, he's, he's, he's going to be all right. I'm pretty certain. And uh, he said, you're worried about me. I said, yeah. So why did you wait six days to phone me then? <laughs> After I texted you. I said, oh, well, you know. I wasn't as worried as I guess I'm making out. But I was concerned. I just, I thought I'd leave it for him to phone me, you know, because he said he was going to call or whatever. But then when he didn't, I thought, well, it's been a few weeks now or a few days or whatever and I'm just like okay I better just check up on him but yeah he's going to be alright he's a really clever boy I know he's not a boy anymore but to me he's always going to be a little boy to me because I was 8 when he was born so to me he's always going to be that 7 year old 8 year old annoying little kid and he's now <laughs> What is it? So if he's eight years younger than me and I'm 53, what does that make him? 45? Yeah, he's 45 years old. He's 45 years old. 45. Oh, that's weird. My bottle. My bottle of water just heckled me. Yeah, it's just, I'm starting to wonder, why, 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 wonder, why, 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 I forget the rest of it now, so yeah, I just, Not sure what to do about the podcasts, if I'm honest. I've got, hip I've got hiccups. I've got you. I've got very sleepy hiccups. Wow, they are lazy. I had a hiccup, a two, and then it just stopped. Even I'm so lazy. Even my hiccups can't be bothered to do their job. <laughs> Did you know, did you know, um, just be watching a, a YouTube video about, well, it's actually a clip from a, from a radio show, and there's a scientist, or a, I don't know what, astronomer or whatever, physicist, he has discovered... Out on it in a different solar system, 
a planet two and a half times bigger than this planet with the same gases on it that we that life on this kind of this that that life produces so a certain gas it's ammonia or i don't know what it was called but only living species produces that but on this planet there's i think about i think he said there's there's a 40 like percent it that is uh, twice as much twice as much of that gas on that planet there is on this planet which means there could be twice as many people or living beings as there is here so now the major what is it called the world's world's most powerful world most powerful passport blimey isn't it weird so I put I put in world, world's most powerful into Google no it's not Google it's Microsoft and now it's like coming up world's most powerful passport world's most powerful laser pointer world's most powerful people and some other things. World's most powerful laser. World's most powerful computer. World's most powerful countries. World's most powerful flashlights. I wonder how far down it goes. I it. There's a couple of others, but they're not. I don't want to talk about them. Oh, so the world's most powerful passport is the United Arab Emirates. UAE. It now holds the world's most powerful passport according to the latest data from Latitudes 2000. <laughs> I didn't know there was one of these. Latitudes 2024 Passport Index. It's like the charts of passports, I guess. It's the, the updated charts. Now, number 10, number 9, number 8. Number one, this week's number one, the United Arab Emirates. Emirates, Emirates. So the UEA passport grants its citizens visa free access. Wow, really? To 182 countries worldwide. What? How? How does that work? How do I get one? <laughs> I'm just clicking on that one. The world's most powerful passport in 2023 is held by Japan for the fifth consecutive year. Well, this is weird. Now they're talking about Japan. Uh, the holders of the Japanese passport can visit an impressive 193 out of 227 global destinations visa free South Korea and Singapore share the second place on the passport index with a free visa or visa on arrival score of 192 these passports allow their citizens to access 192 nations without restrictions really Germany and Spain so Deutschland and Espana did I do that right Espana and Deutschland yeah jointly hold the third position granting visa access to 190 destinations this doesn't make sense to me please note that the, I mean the words make sense and the order that the words are in makes sense but what do they mean by visa free and you know visa free access what does it mean you can go to any country and stay for as long as you want and surely that's not the case. 
I mean, from Germany and Spain as well. Unless that's part of the European Union, they're included in that one. But then all the countries in Europe would be the same, wouldn't they? Surely. Like France. And other places. I can't think of any. Yeah. How does my country's passport rank? Okay. Search if the most accurate for your country's passport. Oh, it's now giving me the, the 2024 Global Passport Power Rank. So in 2024, United Arab Emirates is number one now. France is number two. France, Germany, Italy. So we do it in a proper a proper way. So uh, Frank, Deutschland, Italia, uh, Netherlands. I don't know how to say that in Netherlands. Luxembourg, Espania, Austria, Switzerland. So I'm not sure how to say Austria and Switzerland in the the mother tongue. But France is French. I had it. It's gone. France, Francis, Francy, Frank, Frank, Frankie, Frankie. Do you remember me, Frankie? Uh, Deutschland, Germany, Italia, Italy, Espania, Spain. See, you didn't realise I was so educated, did you? Oh, what? Oh, man, what's going on here? Oh, that was just something I was... Okay, anyway, I'll ignore that. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's interesting. Kind of. Oh, this is interesting. This is the ideal age gap for a relationship that lasts. It's got a picture. <laughs> it's got a picture of Leonardo DiCaprio. Um, I mean, he's famous for many things, but having relationships with people even close to his own age is not one of them. And good luck to him as well. I say, I couldn't care, but. People make a big deal about it. They don't. It's just like who cares? I mean, it's as long as everyone involved is happy. Isn't that really what matters? Isn't that really so interesting? To figure out. So have a look. Um, most people feel seven years younger than they are. Oh, apparently. After analysing 3,000 people, this is in MSN, oh, this is in The Independent. There's a clip from The Independent. After analysing 3,000 people, it found that couples with a five-year age gap are 18% more likely to split up than those of the same age. 3,000 people, okay. Was there seven over seven billion people on the planet? And where was this conducted? Emory University in Atlanta. So I'm guessing that I mean I don't know because being on if it was online it could have encompassed lots of different countries. But if it was just going by America then it's going to be different from 
Spain or India or you know it's, it's different countries are going to be different uh, I guess and there's countries where arranged marriages still happen and people marry for different reasons it's not solely based on you know liking each other it's like a lifelong commitment with some people so I don't know <laughs> not with me I, I, I can't remember I don't know how to I, don't, I used to have a relationship I'm sure I did I can't remember it's been so long age is just a number you can't help who you fall for it, I, it's like it's a cliche it's not it's true you can't you should have an age appropriate relationship like well to for who that's weird drunk man injured and arrested after kicking a bison that's a random thing and then what should have done is stuck him in a cage with a bison okay there's a big furore about Leonardo DiCaprio dating that is dating history or Roberto De Niro recently becoming a father to seven a father to recently becoming a father to seven age 79 they make it like he's just had seven kids he's recently become a father again why didn't you just put that because his seven other kids the youngest is 25 years old so it's not like he's got seven kids and like they're they're all under 10 you know what I mean like he's recently become a father to seven aged 79 how can you become a father to seven kids aged 79 I'm getting a sense of pedanticism coming from me De Niro's girlfriend Tiffany Chen is 45 now I mean she's doing well as well isn't she I mean some people can't you know not always have kids when they get to get past a certain age I don't know what it is but I'm going to keep quiet now I just realised that's a that's a rabbit hole I don't want to go down um, so DiCaprio <laughs> Dica I realised like oh I'm pulling back out of that one nope I'm not going there while DiCaprio 48 years old is notorious for appearing to avoid dating anyone over the age of 25 okay so that's that's what they're saying um, but then you've got France's president Emmanuel Macron aged 45 was elected in 2017 not really relevant when he was elected was it was it is it really was he 45 was elected he's 45 now so he was elected in 2017 and people see the way they put these sentences together so what does this what does this read when france's president emmanuel macron 45 was elected in 2017 people were shocked that his wife bridget trognu was 25 years his senior now aged 70 45, 55, 65, 70. Okay, yeah, it's 25. Um, see, things like that don't shock me. I generally don't see any... It's like, so? Whose business is it? Who's, whose business? It's quite ironic, because then you look at um, Macron's wife. She's 70. she don't look like any 70 woman I've ever seen in my life no 70 year old person she only looks about 40 in fact she looks younger than him 
not that I'm judging on her appearance which clearly I am I suppose but I've not really seen I mean it's France it doesn't really it's not that it, <laughs> again that's uh, so I've got to back out of that one I'm not saying France doesn't count I mean it's there's so much going on okay what I'm saying there's so much going on in this country as I'm sure there is in your own country politically there's enough going on to keep me occupied let's put it this way we were in an election year this year so uh, there's a lot of like all these these new promises including you know get stopping unemployment and stopping people from getting paid and you know whatever so there's this new thing now where they're trying to send um trying to push forward a the government the the current government government that will be out in a few months they are trying to put through this bill trying to get it so that they can transport immigrants or illegal immigrants or I don't know whatever you want to call them what they call them to from here that have travelled here from other countries via the channel well from France basically uh, to Rwanda and they got this they spent like 200 or 300 million pounds putting this whole thing together and they're only allowed to send a few hundred you know some like per year or something they've got some sort of guidelines and it turns out that Rwanda this I don't know how much this is true but I listened to a phone-in show on the radio that bit's true and I was lying in bed that that bit's also true and I was giving it for my full attention that's not true Vinny was next to me yeah it was true and this this whole story I'm telling has gone on way too long that's also true someone phoned in saying well I actually live in Rwanda uh, he didn't say it like that he, but he said well I live, in, I live in Rwanda I do actually as it happens and he said uh, all this new accommodation has been put together at least 60% of it has been housed with local people and the local people don't want these refugees going over there because they thought it was for them I don't know if it's tr I mean it's true that he said this on the radio whether it's true or not but what's happened is <laughs> I I'll, I'll just read it. the ever since the kind of said that they're definitely going to go ahead with it what are they called Ref okay refugees asylum it's not illegal refugees illegal asylum asylum seekers because refugees can't be illegal can they really but even can asylum I don't know apparently anyone that comes over on a boat without a passport without a visa without a mobile phone whatever they chuck into the sea on the way here is no proof of identification and stuff they are generally classed as illegal now it's kind of a, a touchy subject but then you look at every and I do mean every other country in the world pretty much you know you try and enter another country just you know you just you know you know you know some of the strictest laws Australia uh, and Australia I, I just loads Australia is one of them but America loads of countries very strict laws when it comes to entering into the country I say Australia because we were trying well the government were trying to uh, copy some of the things that Australia have done and to combat the 
the sort of people coming into the country, we should say uninvited. You know, I, I don't have any any uh, emotions about this thing, personally. But see, I, people say, "Oh, I don't want to say refugees." I've lived basically in a, a refugee, not a refugee camp, but there people a lot of the like there's a local hotel here that was shut down the government took it over and housed well filled it with uh refugees that were awaiting processing or something so and some of the locals like all that yeah well i lived in the ymca in 2001 and I had a little bed, like studio, studio flat, and pretty much the whole building was taken over. Uh, and I'd say seventy-five percent, at least, maybe eighty percent of the people living there were refugees from uh, Afghanistan and places like that. So it's like. You know, this, this, this is all right. This, why am I making such a big deal about it? And there'd be all this stuff in the newspapers, and I'd be at work, and there'd be people talking about it. Oh, really? like I didn't say anything, but like I lived there myself. It's all right, you know. It's cheap rent, sixty-five pound a week, you know. So, but it's like they just. Humans, man, humans. But apparently, uh, this is quite f well. I don't know if it's funny or not. So look, so this said I, I read, I heard it on the news. Okay, this is. I don't know if it's true or not. But here's the headlines. This is on Sky, so who knows if it's. It says more than half of asylum seekers allocated for removal to Rwanda cannot be found <laughs> according to the government's own report so this was today's headlines more than half of the asylum seekers allocated for removal let's just repeat it um, almost 6,000 people were due to be issued a notice of intent that their asylum claim was inadmissible but just over 2,000 are, but just over, but just over 2,000 are able to be tracked down. That's weird that they've done that, isn't it? So instead of saying three quarters have gone missing, they said, so they've almost undersold it. Oh no, okay, here we go. So these are the actual numbers, the proper numbers. 5,700 asylum seekers were going to be sent. 2,143 attend regular check-ins and can be located for detention. But it's unclear where the 3,557 have gone. And then there was this, this thing that was on the news yesterday. Uh... Uh, da, 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 uh, wow. What? Okay, I won't, won't read that. Blimey. Isn't it weird, you know, you put in something and something else comes up and it's like, really? That is, uh, right, I'm going to put the one gone missing. Refugees. I found this kind of quite funny. I don't know why. Ireland threatens... <laughs> Ireland? The island of Ireland threatens to return asylum seekers to the UK, sparking diplomatic squabble. And the reason for this, okay, because I don't know if you know... 
there's uh, the political <laughs> is I'm not laughing I just just uh, I, I really didn't understand this when I was a kid and on the news they'd have the weather at the end of the news on the TV and there'd be the news in Wales Scotland England and Northern Ireland but no weather in Ireland and I thought what do they all live underground or what, what, what's going on what, why why is there no weather in Ireland I was a little kid you know so I didn't understand what was going on so why are they not giving us the, new, the weather for Ireland um, and the reason because Northern Ireland is classed as part of the UK so what's happened is refugees apparently the asylum seekers um, are now travelling to Ireland so instead of coming to the UK into England rather they're travelling to Ireland and also I heard something that people are travelling from Northern Ireland into Ireland itself the, the mainland so they're traveling to Northern Ireland. They'd like, I don't know how they're, because Northern Ireland is part of the UK. So if you get to Northern Ireland, you would treat the same as if you was in England or Scotland or Wales, I guess. I'm not sure how it all works. I don't know. But that's weird though. But if people are actually getting on, if they're getting on boats and they're going to Ireland, then that's not. It's not really for them to say, no, you're going to England, is it really? Because they've chosen to go to Ireland. I don't know, maybe... Yeah, I don't know. I have to figure that one out. I was surprised about Ireland because I, I lived in Ireland for a little while. My family's Irish and my experience of Ireland was um, nice people, but... They don't take no rubbish from people. You know, they, they've got their own minds and they don't like being told what to do, especially by authority. Uh, just like, the, you know, the who does really, <laughs> to be honest? But I just got the uh, impression quite stubborn and had traditions and tradition was important. And there's things that happened, some of the new laws that have gone through the European Union and that have like reached Ireland. For example, no smoking in pubs or restaurants, public places like that. But no smoking in pubs, it became law in Ireland before it became law in the UK, I think. In fact, I might be wrong, but either way, Ireland didn't bother, didn't worry. When the pubs in Ireland are way more, it's way more still part of the culture than the pubs in, in England. Because, I mean, it, maybe it's changed a lot, but when I was there, it, it was every single pub in the town was busy, every single night. Not that they're drinking loads, it's just, it's a social, being social, you know, socialising. Here, we get loads of pubs closed down. And perhaps they was busy at the weekend and that, but... How many pubs left in the UK, le left in, in England? I wonder. How many pubs left in England? 40,000 pubs. There are fewer, pu fewer pubs in England and Wales than ever before. Um, total of pubs dropped below 40,000 during the first half of 2022. A fall of more than 7,000 since a decade ago. Blimey, so that's, that's nearly a... Uh, I don't know, 7, 14, 28, 20, I don't know. It's a percentage, isn't it? Definitely a percentage. There was 39,970 pubs in June. 
down by more than 7,000. Okay. This is the standard.co.uk. I wasn't really asking about England or Wales, just England. I just want to see how many pubs there were in England. England. How many po how many pubs have closed since 2023? Really? Two pubs of a day vanishing. So every day two pubs a day um closed down in England and Wales. It's not the same two pubs, obviously. But that's wow. Maybe it's just society is changing. It's I mean maybe I don't know. I mean I I, I really believed I was wrong, but I really believed that most of the pubs would close down once they put, did the not the stop smoking. Well, they put the smoking ban in in the early 2000s I thought that would be the end of uh, pubs because you take away people's freedom like that and it just I don't know I just didn't expect people that were drinking to abide by the rules but hey it seems to have people you know seem to have got through Oh no! Wait a minute. Not to stop smoking. No, I'm just trying to think. When did it come in in the UK? Stop smoking. Stop smoking ban. A smoking ban in the UK. Was it 2004? UK. Smoking ban in the UK. 2000. Huh? When will the UK smoking ban come into force? 2024. No, that's a different smoking ban. Um, again, that's copied from Canada, I think. Where anyone over the age, anyone under the age of 18 on a certain date this year. Or is it 21? I don't know. Whatever your age it is, I think 18, will never be able to buy cigarettes the whole of their life. So if they turn 18 next year, they won't be able to buy cigarettes. So instead of being by, by age, it's by your date of birth, what year you were born. So no one that was born, if it is still 18, you know, the age of buying cigarettes, I don't know. If it's still 18, then whoever was born 18 years ago, so whatever that is, 2024, 2004, 2006. So anyone born after 2006 will never legally be allowed to buy tobacco products in this country. anyone born from 2007 onwards which is I mean there are literally people in their 40s having to ask their friend who's a, a year older to go to the go to the sh there'll be middle aged men and women standing outside news agents so do us a favour mate I said, could you just get in here and buy me a pack of 20? Yeah. Yeah, I know, I'm not old enough. I'm only 49. Yeah. Uh, just 20. Yeah, of course, of course we'll get the money. So here's, here's, here's 5,000 pounds. Just 20, please. Should be enough. Probably how much they'll be by then. By then, I thought I'm 53. I'm, I'm, I'm over 49, and I? Oh my goodness. I'm thinking of 18 year olds being 49 or someone that's 17 being. Uh, There's some logic there somewhere. I don't know where. So, yeah, that's. That's why I try and keep away from the news. Where was the UK? Okay, let's have a look. 2004. 
four. End of 2008? Ah, okay. On the 16th of November, 2004, a public health white paper proposed a smoking ban in almost all places, public places in England and Wales. Smoking restrictions would be phased in with a ban on smoking in NHS and government buildings by... 2006 in enclosed public places by 2007 and pubs bars and restaurants except pubs not serving food by the end of 2008 okay I thought it was earlier than that it shows what I know so when was smoking banned in Ireland March 2004 so I kind of got it right kind of kind of I did think it was it was sooner it was before us and yeah blimey uh. Oh, I could definitely do... I need to get some food. That's what I need to do. Get some food, man. Find any phone calls. Now, 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 now. Good. New consent, requ new consent requirement from Google Ads. What? Go away. Oh, that's just some strange... Sometimes I get some weird things said to me. Oh. Um, dum, 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 dum. For the phone... Me, 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 me. So I'm going to go. So that's it for... Now, so thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself because, because, because of the things she does. Because of the wonderful, I don't know. We're off to see the wizard. That that's what kind of the song I was trying to sing. So remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy. Be gentle with yourself. Okay, be gentle. Lots of love.